<coughs> Riders on the storm. Either that or Black Sabbath. <laughs> Is this because you heard that I played accordion professional? <laughs> you suck. <laughs> I, I, I knew this was going to be a complete S show, so let's let's get to it. It's actually, uh, I think it's almost uh, 39 years now, but who's counting? Uh, <clears throat> I got started uh, because um, I didn't want to be homeless. Basically, I was renting and I looked at what it would cost to rent versus own. And uh, back then, uh, you didn't really need money or a job <laughs> to buy real estate. So it worked out for me. No, this was Massachusetts. I I was I was I mean, is this really important? <laughs> you, you, you think so? Okay. Well, um, I was um, basically selling um, records. Twelve. I don't know. I don't know how many inches they were. Were they twelve inches? Whatever. Um, you know, though though they. No, it's 33 and a third was the speed. I'm not that old, God. Uh, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I was selling records at um, Brandeis University. I was kind of taking a course there or two, poli sci. And uh, yeah, every day I, I lugged uh, heavy boxes of records into their student union and sold the records. And at the end of the day, if I had a pocket full of cash, I would go to the guy that sold me the records and buy more. And I did the same thing the next day. Eventually, I thought to myself, okay, let's see if cash means anything at a bank. You would think it does. Today, it doesn't. Back then, it did. I walked into a bank, and I don't even know if they're still in business. They probably aren't under that name. It was a cooperative bank of Framingham. And I, I basically just said to the guy, I want to buy a house. Uh, this is what I made today. And I reached into my pocket and took out a, a wad of cash and put it on his desk. And he looked at me like, okay, what do you want to spend? I said, I don't know. Uh, and, and he said, okay. <laughs> and I went out and bought something. And oddly enough, the deal went through. Uh, the funny thing is I was going to actually see a different house when I bought this particular house and I stopped in at a real estate office to get directions <laughs> to the real estate office that I was supposed to go to. And he said, oh, um, hmm. well, I've got something just for you. And he took me to a place and I bought it. What was the question again? <laughs> For me, well, I no, no longer sell records out of the trunk of my car. Um, and, and I don't have to worry about being homeless, thankfully. 
Uh, and I would say that um, I, I have a focus on the real estate business, which is a, a good steady business because people need a place to live and places to conduct their businesses. Although uh, with the coronavirus, um, seems like it's all one and the same right now. I mean, we, we have a commercial space in Newton Center, uh, Massachusetts, and I was commenting to one of my admins yesterday as I walked to drop some mail off um, at the corner, half the block, uh, and, and, and we've been there now since 1995, so 25 years. I don't think I've ever seen a vacancy, you know, maybe once, and I immediately lease the place. Now there's multiple vacancies. Travel business is out. Some, some sort of uh, teaching kids uh, how not to flunk out of school business is out. Did they teach music? No, that's on, that's on the other side. They're still in business. World domination. I'm serious. Always built the business. Always built the business from day one so that it could infinitely scale. That it would always be providing the best services with the best agents, the best listings, the best, the best, the best, best technology, best training, you name it. And I think we're we are actually on track to provide all of of that the best. And an improvement this week with a new camera for me. So half my head doesn't look like it's been ripped off. And it's a different show because I didn't open it. Much better this week. We're gonna we're gonna have you do not only the openings every week from now on, but everything past the opening. And at the end, I'll say something. Uh, I'll say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, when you say our business, are you talking about industry-wide, nationally? Uh, uh, well, let's just say it's put maybe more focus on um, what is really important. Uh, what is really important is communication with agents, communication between the agents and their clients, communication with the agents, with their um, their network, you know, whether it's someone who wants to buy a house now or someone who bought a house from them 10 years ago, uh, it's given some agents some time to communicate and not be running around
I don't know. I don't know what to, I'm back. Oh, maybe it was just a bad connection. Uh, wh what was I talking about? The agents. Um, you know, uh, no one's going to the movies, restaurant, or shouldn't be. Uh, I guess movie theaters are open, so shame on me for saying you shouldn't be going to the movies. But uh, honestly, if everyone just stayed home and did real estate, I think uh, our infection rate would, would go down. Uh, it also um, helped agents uh, redefine what I've been saying for years, which is, um, are real estate offices all that important? Well, okay, I, 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 I don't want to make this a blanket thing. I pay pretty good overhead in two commercial locations, one in basically the center of the center of Newton Center, which, you know, we're 20 feet away from our largest competitor. So they're not going, and Starbucks, there, there you go. I mean, demographics, just go where Starbucks is and you'll do fine. The other office is on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston, which is where when people are going to the Red Sox game or concerts at Fenway Park, yeah, they're walking right by our door. So another not terribly inexpensive, actually, if you go by dollars per square foot, that space is probably three times the rent of the first one. Uh, <laughs> when I find, when I signed that, that lease in Boston, I literally said, well, we're going for broke. It either works or whatever. Uh, but, you know, do agents really? Okay, here's a perfect example. You were doing uh, some shows out of that office. Where are you today? You're at home. Where am I today? I'm on my front lawn. Don't you love my house? Um, but all joking aside, uh, what, what are the real estate offices there for? When I opened my first office in 1985, which was a nice office, but uh, modest compared to what we're talking about now, um, agents had to come to the office. I mean, we, we had telephone books uh, that came out every week that had all the listings. Of course, of course, they were completely worthless because by the time you got the book half the time, you know, and there was no search. You just went, okay, I'm going to look for a property in Brookline, uh, go to the bees. I mean, really it was, a, you know, I'm a dinosaur. Let's, let's face it. Uh, they were, as far as I know, it could have been Realty World. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. It could have been some other, there, there was all kinds of names, uh, I guess, that didn't survive. Remax, uh, no, you're not not correct. That was not the 70s. Uh, we started Castles Unlimited in 1985, and Remax was maybe 83. I mean, they literally were just a couple years because when they finally got to the Boston area, it was either late 80s or early 90s. But yeah. You know, we can go back to Coldwell Banker. I think they were in San Francisco in uh, the early 1900s. Like, you know, you know, uh, it was like uh, uh, Jed Jedediah Coldwell and uh, you know, and Lucius uh, Banker opened up in 1903 or something. You know, it, it, yeah, something like that. I, I don't believe so. I believe they start in California. But listen, there, there's um, all kinds of ways to look at who is first. Um, you know, so 
that's something biblical too i'm sure well disruptors uh there's, there's I don't even know if I don't even know if Century Twenty One would have been considered a disruptor. They were an aggregator. They were a uh, a networking. Um, they, they were connecting uh, independence, and I mean everyone was independent back then. Uh, but it was a different industry. I mean, when even the word that we use now is a misnomer, but it came from that era. It was um, the exclusive, the exclusive listing. Well, the exclusive listing back then was I, Jim Lowenstern, take a listing and I'm going to sell it. You, Larry Lawfer, have a buyer. I say, sorry, Larry, it's my exclusive. And I literally like slam the door on your foot. Um, and we still use that word today, but it's just the opposite. You know, it's welcome. Please come in. Yeah. No, 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 mm -mm, no. That, that, that. Right, because that was, there was sub agency back then, and buyers agency came in, probably more or less. The early 90s and there was even a point in time where agents didn't like buyers agents agent you know there were brokers that would advertise you know you're you're thinking that this broker is looking after your best interests they're not looking after you they're looking after themselves and they're looking after their client and everyone said nah, nah that's not true and eventually as we know now, 25, 30 years later, this is the way it really was. And now we understand that to be the way things should be. We did a whole show and you didn't ask me one question that I sent you to ask me, but that's okay. We can do another show. This is, this show is almost over. I made it, I made, I made it way too easy. And even then you messed it up. Oh, oh really? I'm sorry. I should have read my questions after I wrote them down. <laughs> yeah, we got a new agent today. Um, Seems to be a very smart uh, woman who uh, has invested in um, in property already, uh, and she was telling me her schedule and some day and she's in the medical field and she's working like twelve hour shifts on the weekend and she was saying, you know, I've been doing this for about seven or eight years or maybe it was twelve years I can't remember exactly, but she said in the beginning I would work twelve hour shifts seven days a week and i'm going okay I'm, and i'm just listening and eventually i go oh i get it you know uh you, you're basically working yourself to death and you have no control over your schedule this is a wonderful business for that person not the person that wants to work less but doesn't want to be worked to death okay so what we have here is a hard working individual who will probably put a hundred percent of her energy into this even while she has this other job for a while but she will get to a point where she can 
just do this 100 percent of the time. And it, it's it's a, it's a great career. I mean, it allows you to be creative. It allows you to meet new people, allows you to make money, hopefully, if if it's not if you're really good at it, but if you really like it, you'll be really good at it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you two stories that that made me think of something. So yesterday, a um, a closed sale hit my desk. It wasn't a sale; it was a rental. I, I actually haven't seen the paperwork yet. It was just a check. The check was for two hundred dollars, and I mentioned to my admin, "I go, wow, I feel really bad." And he says, "What?" And I go, "You know, because I know he's been working hard, and it's been a long time." I go, I'm going to have to kick him some extra money. I said, hey, what, what am I supposed to do? Pay him a thousand percent of the commission. Uh, my first commission, and I remember quite clearly, uh, was for a three month short term rental. I started selling real estate in the summer. Great timing. In Palm Beach, Palm Beach, Florida, which great zip code, pick the right zip code. But I started in like May after everyone cleared out of town. Uh, so my first uh, sale, it was a rental, $90. And I, and I did the math because I worked on that for probably two months, you know, or worked until I got that. It was two months. It was like 10 cents an hour. You know, I could have worked at McDonald's and made more. Uh, but my next sale, because uh, I did find the only person left on the island with me that summer, and I sold them um, a condominium overlooking the ocean. So then I got excited about this. Wow, I can go from $90 to, uh, I can't, I, I think it was probably maybe $6,000. I was like, you know, a lot of money back then. Uh, so this guy in our office who made the $200, well, he's not going to make 200, uh, but close to 200. I thought, you know, I, I'd give him a little pep talk. I said, Congrats. You know, you know, the bigger things are coming, you know, I'm going to throw a little extra money your way, whatever. Go, go. And he, he was not like, he said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. More deals are coming. I, I'm, I'm on top of this. And he's very positive. So that's the kind of person that succeeds in the business, no matter what comes your way. I mean, I had a great sale last week with an agent in our office and the whole thing unraveled and they're asking for their money back. They're buying it for literally hundreds of thousands of dollars less than it's worth. I mean, it's going to be okay. I'll be able to sell it again. Knock wood. It'll be, it'll be fine. But you know, you just got to dust yourself off. Um, that, <laughs> Hopefully they're smaller now. <laughs> they should be smaller now. Never heard of them. Remax, I've heard of. What was the first one? I've heard of them. Yep. Well, it's, uh, I guess, night and day. Um, uh, I, I, I look at what we are actually creating with our company more in line with um, an Amazon model versus a McDonald's model. And, and those are two hugely successful 
Fortune 500 companies. One is an aggregator of everything in the world. You can come to us and you can buy it. So we sort of look at real estate that way. Even our logo is planet Earth. And we're always training our agents that if there's a buyer or seller listing anything in the world, you know, we're, we're, we're limited by geography. We're not on the moon or Mars yet. Uh, and, and the flip side of that is a McDonald's uh, model, which is the franchise model where you have different owner operators around the world paying to use that, that brand name for their hamburgers. Uh, when, I, I think, yeah, I think the Big Mac, that was from Pulp Fiction. I remember that now. But uh, yeah, but that that's going back to the way it was. It, it, it's, it's, it sort of was like this. Uh, having done this as long as I have, I've seen agents need to come to the office. First, it was for the book, for the listings. Then uh, in, in our MLS, we were the first office Actually, we were maybe two or three years ahead of everyone else when it came to digitizing the listings. I would download all the listings onto a hard drive every day. So we had a, an MLS back then that would often crash. So an agent would come to the office and they couldn't do their work. We bypassed that by downloading everything. This was pre-internet. Um, you know, there, there, there wasn't even a cell phone back then, but we were already using uh, these IBM clones to, to do that. Uh, speeding it up to today, now the internet, uh, you know, we've got supercomputers in our pockets. So the agents don't have to come to the office. The office is wherever they are. The office is in their car, the office is at Starbucks, the office is at their home their clients' home, their listings, wherever they want to be. So that was pre-pandemic. And there were companies certainly saying, we're virtual, we're virtual. The bigger these virtual companies got, the better their agents became. They became, it was almost like internet dating. In the beginning, oh, you met someone on the, on the internet? You're, you're what? You're dating them? You know, now those virtual companies, some of them, uh, they're, they're almost acceptable, you know, and it'll get to a point where just like probably half the people who, who meet, you know, the, the person they end up marrying meet on the Internet. I, I would say, you know, almost half the companies are going to be virtual because why do you need that office? You know, it's just a sea of formica. You know, empty desks, the agents are out running around selling and they don't need to go to the office really for anything. I mean, it, but times change and and business models change. So let's take one of the largest, uh, not gonna name names, but uh, they're on the stock exchange and they're a virtual real estate company. And they have this technology where you sort of walk around and you're an avatar and, you know, who has time for this crap? Let, let, let me be honest, uh, we're out selling real estate. We're not, we're not playing, uh, I'm an avatar real estate agent games. Uh, so that isn't really necessary, uh, but, there's a lot of these virtual companies that are starting to grow and agents that were going to these offices, these brick and mortar offices are now working there because they have lower overhead so they can get paid more. But now when this virus is over, it you know could be over in the next, let's say six, seven months, um, they're gonna turn around, they're gonna say, oh, I like the new company and all that. 
you know, all my friends came over or whatever. I'm getting paid more, but I'd really like to have a desk and maybe a conference room where I can have a cup of coffee with a buyer or seller. So now they're retrofitting their business model to the old way, but with a tighter margin. And that and that's what I see is going to be happening. You're going to have sort of like the either the decline, or uh, we're going to say so, some of these names that you've mentioned before. I don't know how they're going to change their business model. I mean, did you notice how offices changed? Um, probably in the last five to ten years, you started seeing instead of desks, they started having like. Um, coffee counters with high stools. And and it was almost like a real estate office now looked more like a, uh, a, a coffee shop or a Starbucks. Seriously, I mean, it was just, you know, a place to put your laptop and have a cup of coffee. And, and, and you know, you could have a hundred agents and you don't need a hundred desks. Well, well because there's never going to be a hundred agents sitting in the office anymore. It's just, just pointless. It's absolutely different, but there's still too many offices out there with the technology that we have. And I think this virus pointed it out. Business has been booming. Agents have been running around doing as many sales or more sales. People are moving out from the city because they don't want to be going into common areas and elevators. And uh, they're not saying, oh, where's my desk? They're saying, how much can I make? Right? Well, that's uh, my my vision, uh, and maybe eventually it'll be, oh, well, that was an interesting vision because now it's commonplace, and it's uh, it's basically deconstructing the business. Uh, I I coined a term uh, reverse franchising a number of years ago, so. A reverse franchise, well, you know what a franchise is. One person ponies up, let's say, $100,000, gives a chunk to the, to the brand, and then builds out an office and hires people and buys paper clips, staplers, uh, computers, you name it. And one person now has to hire agents to help them run the place, pay the bills, and... Uh, hopefully make a profit. Um, how, how important are those offices now? And how important is it that one person comes up with $100,000? It's not that important anymore. What is important to the agent is that their company provides the same services that they're used to or better, and uh, that they get paid as much or possibly more. So, you know, not going into every last detail of uh, my, my business plan, uh, it's, it's about making the agents part of that system to give them uh, a piece of the action, or in, in some cases, many pieces of the action, uh, whether it be residual income from recruitment, which helps grow the company, um, all kinds of incentives there, all kinds of incentives. So, um, yeah, all you have to do is take that one little idea, the real estate office, is it necessary? Define, define what it is or isn't in this changing time and uh, agents can make more money. And at the end of the day, I think, uh, Everyone is in this business primarily, and although some people have convinced me otherwise, but 
most of them, you know, want to make money. I, I, I spoke to one a couple of weeks ago and I think my head exploded. Uh, she is working at Cobalt Banker. I think she, before Cobalt Banker, she might have been with the Wolf and then maybe Zip Realty and then Cobalt Banker, but whatever. She's always been at 50%, 50-50 split and has never questioned it. And, and, and she spoke to her friend who introduced me to her. She said, he made me feel stupid. It's like, maybe you're just feeling the way you are for the first time. <laughs> what, is, what does it have to do with me? I'm pointing out the obvious. You know, people, people that do as well as you are making far more than 50%. She said she didn't need the money. Well, even if you don't need the money, there's somebody that could use the money. You know, she, she, was make, she was making calls for Biden. I'm sure the Democrats would love her money. Her, grand, her, her children and possible grandchildren. No, 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 don't, let's not get me uh, that much. Um, uh, YourMillionDollarYear.com. That's where you buy it. Yeah. A few, a few years ago. About, yeah. No, no, it wasn't pre-Zillow, but it was pre a few things. Uh, I, I think, I think it all comes back to, um, technology expectations. What, what you might've thought wasn't possible and that, um, traditions and customs wouldn't change. Again, it comes down to that office. Um, when, um, when we had the lockdown, uh, for, um, for the coronavirus, uh, I pretty much like most people thought, well, that's, that's that <laughs> not going to have any business for, I don't know, you know, uh, people were literally shutting their doors. And I mean, there, unfortunately, lots of, lots of businesses that still, still are. Yeah. Uh, but it, it allowed me some time to reflect on, what we do have versus what we don't have. And um, some, sometimes, um, you know, adversity uh, brings a whole new uh, set of values and uh, lower overhead. I, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of office buildings that are gonna be very empty. Uh, I, I think that um, houses are going to be maybe not necessarily a little larger, but people are going to be looking for less less um, urban environments and maybe a little more suburban uh, because we're now entertaining ourselves, working at home, schooling at home. So uh, that's going to change the business. Um, and I think the lower overhead will ultimately um, go to the agents. And I think because of that, there are some companies that are so mired in the old way, the franchise uh, paying up to, okay, the, the franchisee pays up to the master franchise, the regional franchisor or pays up to the national franchisor, or maybe to the internet, you know, so many different layers of, of uh, you know, uh, royalty payments uh, that, um, you know, that's why I said the Amazon way of looking at it, you know, Jeff Bezos said, uh, your margin is my opportunity. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a singular person running a company, I don't have shareholders to answer to. I don't have franchisees that I have to worry about. Um, so no shareholders, no franchisees, just me with a relationship with my agents, I can afford to 
offer them more, much more than the competition. There's a national franchise about 20 feet away from our office in Newton. Um, everyone there I know in the, in the next month or two is gonna be paying hundreds of, hundreds of dollars for errors and emissions insurance. It's a big line item for income for that company, you know, four or $500 per year for a hundred agents, let's say. I think they have more than that. I, that's, that's quite a bit, you know, what, what is that, like $40,000? You know, and if, and if you don't pay us, guess what? Out you go. But they can walk 20 feet away. <laughs> we'll, 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 work, we'll work it out. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, probably one of the last points I made in the book that I took the, the book in its entirety and said, uh, you know, you might be working for a company that doesn't incorporate these ideas. And I know that my ideas, they can't be patented or copyrighted or trademarked or anything. I own uh, the trademark 100% plus, and I didn't even know what that meant even when I was doing it. It was some, kind of a goof uh, against Remax uh, actually years ago. But now it actually does have meaning. Uh, that being the point, the business model, anybody can take that book, get into my head and go, ah, oh, I see what he's doing. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, you, you, you're, you're not just telling people your business model, but you're, you're giving them all your philosophies and your vision into the future for the industry and all that. You're really shooting yourself in the foot. And I thought, you know what? If everyone ended up doing what I'm doing, in other words, paying the agents more, giving them more, giving them more freedom, giving them more opportunities, uh, it's going to put most of my competition out of business. So I don't want to be that disruptor, but I'm just sort of deconstructing the industry for the benefit of the agent. Does that make any sense? And they were all disruptive. Exit, Keller Williams, Remax, all disruptive. I, I did exit. Yep, I mentioned that. Can't think of anything. <laughs> Not patented. I did. And it could be possible. And listen, there's no brand out there that can't do what I'm doing. I just think that it's going to be difficult for them to do it because they have so many. Um, I, I guess it's mouths to feed, basically, and people to make happy, whether it's Wall Street or, you know, I mean, Warren Buffett's in the business. Uh, he doesn't do any. He he doesn't do anything for free. 
uh, that I'm um, aware of. But yet, sometimes in real estate, I mean, the number one, I'm, I'm not going to mention names, but the number one uh, realtor in uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I sat at her desk and saw her putting a deal together. And she literally told the guy, just, just buy it. I won't take a commission. You know, and I, and I think he probably did. She she was, you know, there's a sandwich here and she's snapping her fingers at, to, to, to her. I'm not sort of giving her away now. But uh, deals are done that way. I mean, not, not everything has to have a payday. And with these national brands, I mean, the franchise that I was part of, uh, basically, if, if I was still there and they've just about everyone that I was doing business with, with that brand at that time, they've all left every single one. Why is that? Because they had a better way of doing business. No, they, they just had a brand and they, they didn't understand that at the very beginning of that relationship, you have to really look at the person and find out what they want and consider their needs. And that's why they're not successful. Yeah, uh, pe pe people are important. And they and they thought and they thought the money was more important, and because and because they thought the money was not was more important. Guess what? They don't have now. They don't have they don't have they don't have money. Probably I don't know. They might have money, but they don't have they don't have all the people working for them. Let's put it that way. Look at the sun, so it's shining right behind me. Oh, cool. Okay. I thought you were gonna play the Jim Croce song. What it called? Better not mess with Jim. No, whipping post is good. I used to open up my radio show. Thanks, Larry. We're going to let you do all the shows now, just like this. Is cool. 